He is known for being an influential Hungarian sociologist during the first half of the 20th century. He is recognized for being a key figure in classical sociology and one of the founders of the sociology of knowledge. He is Karl Mannheim, best known for his book Ideology and Utopia. Karl Mannheim, a prominent Hungarian sociologist, emerged as a leading figure in classical sociology and a pioneer in the field of sociology of knowledge during the first half of the 20th century. With a keen intellect and a deep understanding of society, Mannheim delved into the intricate complexities of ideologies and their impact on social groups. As a young scholar, Mannheim embarked on a quest to uncover the underlying dynamics of human societies. His groundbreaking work, Ideology and Utopia, became a cornerstone of his intellectual legacy. In this seminal book, Mannheim introduced the concept of partial and total ideologies, underscoring that the latter encompass comprehensive worldviews specific to distinct social groups. He further distinguished between ideologies that perpetuate existing social arrangements and those utopias that dare to challenge the status quo, envisioning a transformative future. Mannheim's ideas resonated deeply within the realm of philosophy and sociology, prompting a paradigm shift in understanding the intricate relationship between society and its belief systems. His work shed light on the profound influence of ideologies in shaping individual perspectives and collective consciousness. Mannheim's analysis of the interplay between partial ideologies and total utopias offered a fresh lens through which societies could examine and evaluate their guiding principles. In the Annals of Social Thought, Karl Mannheim's contributions continue to inspire scholars and intellectuals alike. His profound insights into the nature of ideologies and their potential to shape societies have left an indelible mark on the field of sociology. Mannheim's belief in the transformative power of utopia serves as a reminder that the pursuit of a better future lies within the realm of possibility, waiting to be embraced by those courageous enough to challenge the existing order. Karl Mannheim, a renowned philosopher and sociologist, led a life of intellectual and geographical migration that can be divided into three main phases, Hungarian, German, and British. Throughout his career, he engaged with influential thinkers such as Georgi e. Lukacs, Oscar Jassy, George Simmel, Martin Heidegger, Edmund Husserl, Karl Marx, Alfred and Max Weber, Max Scheler, and Wilhelm Dilthey. Mannheim's work was characterized by his attempt to synthesize elements from German historicism, Marxism, phenomenology, sociology, and Anglo-American pragmatism. During the First World War, Mannheim found himself involved in several influential intellectual circles. He participated in the Galileo Circle, founded by Karl Polanyi, which also included Michael Polanyi. He also joined the Social Science Association organized by Oscar Jassy in the Sontagsgris, or Sunday Circle, led by Georgi Lukacs. In 1919, during the brief period of the Hungarian Soviet Republic, Mannheim taught at the Pedagogical Institute of the University of Budapest, thanks to the support of his friend and mentor Lukacs. However, Mannheim did not share Lukacs' political conversion to communism, and both were eventually forced into exile after the rise of Horty as regent of Hungary. Mannheim chose exile in Germany and resided there from 1920 to 1933. In Germany, Mannheim faced challenges in his academic career. He attempted to secure a sponsor to teach philosophy in Heidelberg but was unsuccessful. Nonetheless, in 1924, he began working under the guidance of German sociologist Alfred Weber, Max Weber's brother, and Emil Lederer. In 1926, Mannheim's habilitation, a qualification necessary to teach sociology at Heidelberg, was accepted by the Faculty of Social Sciences. He was ultimately chosen for a prestigious professorship in sociology over other competitors, including Walter Benjamin. From 1929 to 1933, he served as a professor of sociology and political economy at the Johann Wolfgang Goethe University Frankfurt am Main. Notable figures such as Norbert Elias and Hans Goethe worked as his assistants during this time. However, Mannheim's career took a drastic turn in 1933 when he was ousted from his professorship due to the anti-Semitic laws implemented by the Nazi regime. Forced to flee Germany, he sought refuge in Britain and became a lecturer in sociology at the London School of Economics. In 1941, he was invited by Sir Fred Clark, the director of the Institute of Education at the University of London, to teach sociology on a part-time basis. Mannheim's role at LSE declined due to wartime conditions, but he was appointed as the first sociology professor at the Institute of Education in January 1946, a position he held until his death in London a year later. Throughout his time in England, Mannheim played a significant role in various intellectual circles. He was actively involved in The Moot, a Christian discussion group that included renowned poet T.S. Eliot. This group focused on the role of religion and culture in society and was convened by J.H. Oldham. Additionally, Mannheim's editorship of the extensive Routledge series on social sciences further solidified his position of influence. Karl Mannheim's intellectual journey, 
marked by his migration from Hungary to Germany and finally to Britain, was shaped by his interactions with prominent thinkers and his attempt to synthesize various philosophical and sociological perspectives. His work continues to be relevant and insightful, offering valuable insights into understanding society and culture in our daily lives. In the autumn of 1915, Karl Mannheim found himself in the vibrant intellectual circles of Budapest. As the youngest founding member of the Sontagsfries, alongside notable thinkers such as Bela Balish and Georgi Lukacs, Mannheim engaged in discussions on a wide range of literary and philosophical topics. The group delved into the works of German diagnosticians, the novels of Fyodor Dostoevsky, and the writings of Soren Kierkegaard and the German mystics. The Sontagsfries had a distinct vision. They rejected any positivist or mechanist understanding of society and were dissatisfied with the existing political arrangements in Hungary. Instead, they believed that the way forward lay in a spiritual renewal that would bring about a revolution in culture. They sought to change Hungary through a profound transformation led by individuals who had attained a significant level of cultural awareness. Interestingly, while the Sontagsgris rejected a materialist Marxist critique of society, they did not exclude Marxist themes from their discussions. Karl Mannheim, influenced by Georgi Lukacs' Marxist interests, recognized Marx as the forerunner to the sociology of knowledge. This fusion of ideas and influences shaped Mannheim's Hungarian writings, including his doctoral dissertation, Structural Analysis of Epistemology, which foreshadowed his lifelong quest for synthesis between different intellectual currents. Karl Mannheim, a prominent sociologist and philosopher, embarked on a journey during his time in Germany to delve into the roots of culture. It was during this period that he transitioned from philosophy to sociology, seeking to understand the relationship between society and knowledge. In his doctoral dissertation, titled, Structural Epistemology of Knowledge, Mannheim explored the structure of epistemology and the intricate connections between the knower, the known, and the to-be-known. His work on epistemology represented the pinnacle of his early, idealist, phase, laying the groundwork for his later exploration of hermeneutic issues within culture. In one of his essays, Mannheim introduced the hermeneutic problem of the relationship between the whole and the parts. He delved into the differences between art, the natural sciences, and philosophy with respect to their truth claims. Mannheim argued that while science constantly seeks to disprove theories, art can coexist within multiple worldviews, and philosophy falls somewhere in between. He also highlighted the danger of relativism, emphasizing that if knowledge is perceived as relative to a specific historical period, it may become inaccessible to future generations. However, Mannheim's ambitious sociological analysis of the structures of knowledge was met with suspicion by Marxists and neo-Marxists, who saw the rising popularity of the sociology of knowledge as a betrayal of Marxist inspiration. This led to heated debates between Mannheim and scholars like Horkheimer within academic forums. Despite the contest between Mannheim and Horkheimer, other sociologists, such as Hans Freyer and Leopold von Wies, also posed significant challenges to Mannheim's ideas. Mannheim's theory on the sociology of knowledge drew inspiration from Immanuel Kant's epistemological discoveries. He believed that knowledge was dependent on social reality, a concept rooted in Marx's theories on social classes. Mannheim's central question revolved around the relationship between society and knowledge, seeking to understand the historical nature and unity of mind and life. He argued that the sociology of knowledge provided an extrinsic interpretation of thought products, separate from the imminent interpretation based solely on intellectual content. Furthermore, Mannheim emphasized the role of the intelligentsia and their connection to ideology and utopias. He described the utopian mentality as a key aspect of his analysis, highlighting four ideal types. Mannheim's work expanded the concept of ideology, recognizing that everyone's beliefs, including those of social scientists, were products of their social context. He cautioned against the determinants of knowledge, such as social class, location, and generation, leading to relativism but proposed relationism as a countermeasure. Mannheim's exploration of the sociology of knowledge remains influential and insightful today, offering valuable insights into the relationship between society and knowledge. His ideas prompt us to critically examine the foundations of our beliefs and understand the social context in which they are formed. By recognizing the potential biases and limitations of our knowledge, we can strive for a more nuanced understanding of the world and foster dialogue and cooperation across diverse perspectives. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.